the goal, of course, for parenting isn't just to get your kids to do stuff. Our goal is to help them to become mature followers of Jesus Christ. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I'm back this week with another fantastic guest. You guys are gonna be so blessed. His name is Matthew McDill and we're gonna learn all about um, Matthew's family this week and we're gonna hear from him, some great encouragement from him. But first, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, CTC Math. You guys have heard us talking about CTC Math for quite some time now. Our family uses them. We absolutely love them. If you are a mom like myself, who, I shouldn't say this out loud, but hates math, because <laughs> I really do, who dislikes math and dislikes teaching it to my children, CTC Math is a fantastic online curriculum that will be greatly beneficial to you. You can go to ctcmath.com and sign up for their free trial. You will love them. It's not gonna hurt to try them out if you're scrambling to try to figure out what to do, ctcmath.com. But without further ado, welcome Matt, Matthew. I was gonna say Matt, do you go by Matt? You always Either way, me. but Matthew generally. That's what yeah. I thought. I, I, for some reason, I instinctively wanted to say Matt, which is kind of weird because, you know, Brooklyn, my oldest, I assumed we would call her Brooke as she yeah. grew older and never, mm -hmm. I, I just don't ever call her Brooke. Doesn't I can't bring happen. myself to do it. It doesn't happen. So <laughs> I don't know why I would call you Matt. Your name is Matthew and I only know you as Matthew, but Matthew McDill, welcome to the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. Thank you so much. I love uh, being a part. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. We met. Oh my goodness. Okay. I am going to tell the story. I wasn't going to tell the story, but I am going to tell the story. Tell the story. <laughs> I'm going to tell the story about how we met because this is kind of funny. It makes me look pretty good. So it go does. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew was a hero in my world. Small feet. <laughs> about, I don't know, a year and a half ago, we were at a um, convention together. It was the state Alliance convention. And we were in this really old, uh, what was it? It was like a Christian retreat yeah. center, Conference right? Conference center or something, yeah. Conference center. And this place was old. And we were in these old dorms and it, it was it was kind of um, not well taken care of. It was through COVID. No one had stayed there for quite some time. And I go to my room one night and there was a cockroach. <laughs> and it was, I, I don't know, tell me if I'm exaggerating. It was like two <laughs> inches long, at least. It was... It was worth being frightened over, I it guess. Was, it was huge. <laughs> it was big, yeah. And so I, I didn't know what to do because I wasn't going to kill it myself, but I couldn't live in the room with it. So I opened my door and thankfully, Matthew and Israel Wayne were standing right outside of my door. And I was like, I need one of you men to come and kill a cockroach for me. And I remember you came into the room and you were like, whoa. <laughs> that <is big>. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And, uh, and he died that uh, night. We, we, I don't know that we had actually met before that. No, no, that was the first was time it. we met. I mean, I think I knew who you were, but there, there it was. That was the, the introduction. Yes. yes, yes. You came and saved my life. You killed me from this <laughs> gigantic cockroach. It was so disgusting. Anyway, the conference was amazing. It was great, but the cockroach was gross. And I didn't even tell Brooklyn about that until after we left. I just remember when she came yeah. back to the room that night, I just said, I, let's just keep everything off of the ground, just in case there might be yeah. critters and stuff. Because if I had told her, she, that was tonight. the first night she would not have slept. <laughs> so, right. Anyway, thank you for saving my life. Um, I am so glad to have you on the podcast with me this week. I am always in awe of the people that God provides for encouragement, encouragement to myself, encouragement to our listeners. And so this week, we're going to talk about some ways to help our children become self-motivated. And, you know, it's it's a hard transition as we're going from disciplining and raising our kids to discipleship and trying to figure out how to do this parenting thing. Matthew, I know you've got a, a few kids, right? So I'm going to let you introduce your family yeah. to us. Um, but you've got some practice in this world of homeschooling and uh, discipleship and helping our kids to become self-motivated. So tell us about your family and yourself. Well, uh, my wife, Dana, and I have uh, nine children, and the oldest <clears throat> is uh, 23, married, and then I have two uh, boys uh, next who are in college right now, and so they're all out of the house, the first three, and now I have six at home, which seems small now, it's like, well, yeah. only six, you know, <laughs> after all of them, and so oldest is 17 down to an eight-year-old, so yeah, we're... I mean, we've had experience in the sense of some of them are moving on and, and doing well, 
but we're still right in the middle of it too. Uh, yeah. All yeah. grades, it seems like, you know. That's awesome. And you are on the board of directors for North Carolinians for Home Education, um, which of course is how we met because we were at the um, state right. convention together. Um, we're we're going to talk about that later in the week, but how long have you been homeschooling? Have you homeschooled your kids from the beginning, your oldest from the very beginning? Yes, that's right. And I was, um, it was right before our oldest kind of went into the kindergarten type age that we went to a homeschool conference. And it was the one that I'm a part of now. Okay. That North Carolinians for Home Education does. We call it Thrive. And we were just going to try to figure stuff out. And we loved the conference so much. We got hooked into being helped, you know, yeah. just people giving us support, having a big community. And so we've never missed the conference since that wow. first, you know, 16 years ago or however long. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's been that, that long of a journey that we've uh, really enjoyed. That's amazing. Uh, yep. Conventions, they will hook you. That's exactly what happened with us. We said we'd never homeschool, went to a convention and that was the end of it. And we have been homeschooling ever since. And they're yeah. such a blessing. And, and it's exciting because we're actually moving into convention season right now. And mm -hmm. I'm so excited to see these conventions that are, you know, popping up and, and they're actually happening this year. I know the last couple of years have been a little right. bit hit and miss with conventions. So I'm glad that we are jumping into this. But right. um, so let's talk about how to help our children to be self-motivated. I know that's a question that I have all the time and, and I want to take it a little bit further, maybe a little bit um, later into the week about how to help myself become self-motivated, <laughs> but it's not just about motivation. You know, we've got all these ideas of what we want our children to accomplish, right? Mm -hmm. We just had um, Dr. Josh Mulvihill on the podcast recently, and he was a fantastic guest. He talked about his book called 50 Things Every Child Needs to Know Before Leaving Home, Raising Children to Godly Adults. And as, as we were talking with him, I just realized, man, our, our job of parenting is so huge. It is not for the faint mm -hmm. of heart. And mm -hmm. it is for parents who are very intentional, right? Some parents just go into parenting and they're like, yeah, well, feed them, clothe them, give them shelter, send them to school, they're good. Yeah. Right. They'll figure it out. And, you know, most people end up figuring it out, but there's so much more to parenting than mm -hmm. that. And so I would love for you to share with us your experience with homeschooling your kids, how to get them self-motivated and moving them from those young years of adolescence into adulthood. Right. And I think uh, you hit on something there a little bit. <clears throat> we want our kids to be self-motivated, but it's funny to think that they are quite motivated already. It's just like you want them to be motivated in a different direction. Right. And I think the reason that I I use this term self-motivated is because parenting seems like it becomes this constant attempt to get your kids to do something that they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Clean your room, be nice to your kids, clean up after yourself, do your meal cleanup, do your chores, do your, do your uh, school schoolwork, work. Work. do your math. You know, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to. And so it's like constantly trying to get them to do something. And that is very, very tiring, you know? And so the goal, of course, for parenting isn't just to get your kids to do stuff. Our goal is to help them to become mature followers of Jesus Christ. That's our real goal. And yeah, we'd like them to do some stuff, but that's the real goal. And the thing is, it's great, is that, that those go perfectly together because if your goal is for them to follow Christ, then what happens is, is you're trying to help them submit their hearts voluntarily to Christ and his lordship and, and what is right and what is good. And they're choosing to do that. They're choosing to follow Christ. And then that's, that's what self-motivated looks like. I mean, in other words, uh, kind of like you mentioned before we started, self-control also in the sense that I'm not trying to control my kid. They're controlling themselves. They're making choices and moving in the right direction. So in what, and just to clarify again, in some ways, it's not that they're not motivated because we're all motivated, right, unfortunately, right. in the wrong direction to start off with. And we want them to be motivated in the right direction. So really, how to help our children become self-motivated is just another way of saying, how do we disciple our kids? How do we help them turn their hearts 
and desires over to Christ and begin to choose the right things, the things that we're wanting them to do anyway. Yeah, it, you're right. Every child is self-motivated in one way or another. And it's so right. funny because every kid I've ever met, mine included and myself included, I okay, this is what I do. If I know somebody's coming over to my house, I can know for days and days that they're coming and I will get my house clean and tidy and order and you know ready for their visit. But it's not until the last like, three or four hours before their arrival that I'm like, okay, now we really have to get serious yeah, about getting happen. the house clean and, and getting it ready for our guests to be here. Um, and I think the same with our kids is that whatever it is that excites them and motivates them is what pushes them to be their very best, to do their very best in whatever it is that we're asking them to do. So I want to go, I want to kind of break this apart and talk about some of the ways that we can help our kids be self-motivated. But first, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts, and we say, this is what you do, step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Matthew McDill. Um, let's talk about how we transition first from that world of discipline to discipleship. Yeah, and I think that's a those two words are interestingly lined up with the idea of external motivation and internal mo motivation. And so discipline. Um, includes training, but it also includes motivating, you know, uh, consequences or things that we're doing to say, we're trying to m push you in the right direction. Um, discipleship is, again, when we want them to develop their own uh, motivation and we're not pushing them, they're choosing. The thing is, is there's a bit of a transition in the, in the parenting process that's really confusing sometimes. Um, and so anyway, I, I put this little homemade chart together. I'm going to show up for show for people who are actually looking. But basically, it's um, a chart with a big cross, a big X in the middle of it. Um, and so what happens is discipleship, um, when you first start parenting, is very low because you're not trying to teach your kids mm -hmm. theology. You're just trying to make them get go to the bathroom in the right spot. So it's a lot of. <laughs> Disciple, you know, discipline is very high, which is I'm trying to, uh, you know, help them behave in a certain way. But then there's a cross in the middle, right? Dis discipline should be constantly descending until discipline isn't a part of your relationship with your kids. Discipleship should be constantly ascending, growing stronger. Now, there's that cross point in the middle, right? And I would say just, you know, 10, 11, 12 maybe 13, depending on development, some people are earlier, some people are later, is a, is a confusing time. Because sometimes you're thinking, this person really needs some discipline. But then you realize, but they're old enough where you feel like you can reason with this person. You know, it's like, don't you want to listen? Don't you want to choose this? You know? And so just having this idea in my mind has always been helpful to me. Where am I in the process with this, with this child? And how do I know how to move out of discipline? I need to move out of discipline. I can't just keep, that's a common parenting mistake. They discipline too long and they think that they're going to get their kids to behave in a certain way. And it's not going to work. It's really going to backfire if you discipline too long. Um, and then another mistake people make is they don't pick up discipleship by developing a different kind of relationship with your kid. Discipleship is built on a relationship. And if you're not prepping for that the whole time, developing a relationship of trust and openness and love and kindness and communication, then all of a sudden, if you're going to sit down with your kid, okay, it's time to learn about Jesus. They're like, I'm not talking to you yeah. because you've not developed a relationship ahead of time. So that's the larger context that helps us understand, you know, maybe some of those particular tips that we'll talk about here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's break that down. I want to actually break down the difference between discipline and discipleship. What does discipline look like? And I like that visual that you give of, of that X and transitioning from one to the other. 
I've never thought of it that way before, but can we break down a little bit more the difference between discipline and discipleship? So uh, discipline is, as I said, includes training in the sense that I'm trying to help them understand how to behave. Primarily, discipline is more of a behavioral modification, which doesn't last very long, but I just want you to, to act different. I want you to, to understand what is right and what is wrong. And usually that means whether it's spanking for little tiny kids or as they get older, giving them, taking away their uh, privileges or freedoms that they like and say, sorry, you can't do that because you're abusing this. Uh, whatever it is, we are providing external motivation to get them to follow the rules and choose the right thing. But as we know, external motivation just doesn't last long enough. And it, and it doesn't accomplish what we want, which is discipleship, which is right. people following Christ. So discipleship is that relationship, right? Where I am walking with my children. This is Deuteronomy uh, 6, 4, right? So we love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we walk with them. So we're teaching that to our children while we sit down, while we rise up, uh, walking by the way, everything that we're doing. And so then we're talking about God. We're talking and we're exemplifying it. And, and helping them to follow Christ. And of course, you know, we'll mention as we go, just some of the other ways, how do we disciple them? Yeah. You know, when we discipline our kids, one of the great privileges that we have as Christian parents is that it's not just for the sake of getting them to act right. It's not just disciplining them and saying, okay, this is exactly what you're supposed to do, but it's training them. And that's where the discipleship part comes in, right? It's during the discipline, sitting and talking to them and helping them to understand this is what God's word says. This is why, this is the why. And, and we always have to get to that why, not just the do, but we have to get to the why yes. of mm -hmm. why we're telling them to do the things right. that we're asking them to do. Now, it could be something simple, do the dishes. Why? Because mom said so and you're to obey mom. Yeah. You know, but there often is a, a much bigger why around what we're instructing our kids to do. Mm -hmm. And teaching them and training them up to do. And so I love the opportunities that I have with my girls to just sit and speak to their hearts. And that's really what you're talking about, right? Is speaking to the heart of our child, not just for the sake of getting them to act a certain way, but so that we can that's exactly move right. into the discipleship phase of their life. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to jump right into one of the tips because sure. you just hit on it, um, which is teach your children God's purpose for life and how everything fits into it. Mm. So one of the ways that we help them become self-motivated, one of the ways we help them follow Christ is by doing what you said, answering the why. Yeah. It's funny because that's the number one question in my house. Why, 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 why? It's like, do this, do that. Why, why do I have to do that? And parents get tired of it and it's like, just do it, you know, yeah. or, or because I said so. But the reality is we have to answer that question. Like you said, we have to say the real why, right. you know? And there are, there's a real why. And so if my, if we say God has called us, just like we said, Deuteronomy 6, to love him. And then we add, as Jesus did later, to love people. Mm -hmm. Then you give them a context for understanding why am I doing what I'm doing? This yeah. is a way that I can honor God in the stewardship of what he's given me. Or this is a way I can love and serve the people he's put around me, which honors him. And there are things I can do that help people come to know him. And so the purpose of life, which is discipleship, right? Yeah. Um, and answering the why in the little things that you do is why they become motivated because it makes sense to them and it's exciting to them. And if they think, like you said a minute ago, we're cleaning up the house because people are coming over. Why? Because we're going to minister to them. Yeah. We're going to encourage them. We're going to talk to cry to, about them, to cry uh, about Christ to them. Well, our home matters doesn't it? And so, you know, that makes sense to them. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I love that period of, you know, I, with my older daughter, I feel like we're definitely more in the discipleship phase with her mm -hmm. and with my younger daughter, who's 11. And you hit right on the, the perfect age is that we are transitioning from that discipline mm -hmm. to discipleship. But I, you know, it's so funny. I remember when Brooklyn was several years younger and I would hear, it was before she was a, a teenager, and I would hear parents of teens talk about the late night talks. And mm -hmm. I just thought, you know, sure. I never, like, I don't remember 
staying up late at night talking to my parents. I probably did. I just don't recall that. But sure enough, and you've got several teenagers in your family. And so I'm assuming it's the same in your house. Mm -hmm. 10, 11 o'clock at night, you know, mom, come lay with me. I want to talk to you about something. And then, you know, and I'm trying to hold my eyelids open with a toothpick. Before now? Right. <laughs> But man, the discussions and the and the yeah. things that we get to talk about and the heart, right. just being able to hear her heart. And my 11 year old's not quite there yet. We do talk about things that are deep, but not like I do with my 16 year old. Mm -hmm. And um, and then when you think through their adult years, you spend so much more time discipling your kids because even when they're adults, I'm sure with your 23 year old, who's your oldest, you still probably disciple that is that a boy mm -hmm. or a girl? What's your oldest is a son oldest or not? Is a girl. Mm -hmm. Is a girl. Okay. So you probably still, you and your wife both still spend time discipling her, even though she's not in your home. So there would be no discipline right. needed there. Yeah. But that's right. God's given you the opportunity to continue with that discipleship because you set that tone for your relationship with her in the home. Um, yeah, we are out of time already. It, this time goes by so quickly. It's amazing to me. So we'll be back on Wednesday um, and we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to talk about some more ways to help our children become self-motivated and how to go from the discipline phase to the discipleship phase. Um, where can people find out more about you, Matthew, and your ministry and what you do? Well, uh, truthtofreedom.org is uh, a blog that I have, and also it has um, the book uh, that I've written there, Loving God, a Practical Handbook for Discipleship, which is just, you know, me trying to record what I want to teach my kids. And yeah, so it's something yeah. that I can share with others. That's awesome. All right. We'll put those links in the show notes. Um, and we'll be back on Wednesday to talk more about that. Um, you guys, if you have not yet watched Schoolhouse Rocked, the movie, go watch it. Go to our website, schoolhouserocked.com. I want to share a testimonial that we recently got about the movie. Um, I just am blown away at how this movie is truly impacting people's lives. And Katie said, we just finished the movie and I couldn't wait to tell you how perfect the timing was. My husband's biggest takeaway was how he needs to support me and encourage me and be our rock. I almost cried listening to him because we just came out of a particularly tough week. Him hearing that reminder in the movie was a total God moment. And I think exactly what we needed to reset for a new week. Thank you. Katie, thank you for that testimonial. And I am so excited to know that your husband's life and heart has been impacted by this movie, schoolhouserocked.com. Go there. You can get the movie. Um, DVDs are scheduled to be out sometime within this first quarter of 2022. We're super excited. We have had so many people asking us about DVDs. So they are almost here. We'll let you know as soon as they're here. If you're not signed up for a newsletter, make sure you sign up for that and you will get all the information you need as soon as DVDs are available, but um, but you can still stream it right now. So have a watch party, share it with your family and friends, invite your friends over to your house and watch it with them. We would be blessed to know that you guys are getting the word out there about Schoolhouse Rocks. Thank you for joining us today. We will be back with you on Wednesday with Matthew McDill. See you then, bye. We can't just give them beliefs and say, believe it because I told you to, sure. because the moment they hit 12 or 13, they're gonna say, why? And if the parent doesn't come up with a good answer, that child is lost and can be lost for a long time. One of the things that we as parents need to understand is that Christianity is not just adding God to our thinking. To, to train kids up to have a true Christian worldview, we've got to understand that the Bible is a revelation from God and it's a history book that reveals to us what we need to know to build our thinking, to have a truly Christian worldview in every area. And many people don't realize that there's ultimately only two starting points, only two foundations, God's Word and man's Word.